as Oculus Rift Psychosis. Oculus Rift is quite amazing. It's amazing how quickly we adjust quickly through a few glances around the movements of the head we reconstruct from those images a three-dimensional reality and as I've talked about in my other videos actually the movement of the attention and it's amazing how people who are using the Oculus Rift are much more expressive much more open, much more spontaneous than they would actually be there on the day when they will be more contained and probably more subdued by the actual say hassle of getting there to the pleasure, leisure centre or whatever so suddenly they're on the roller coaster you know ecstatic ecstatic instantly and then for us standing around they're psychotic. Their behaviour is irrelevant to what to what we're seeing in our constructed three-dimensional reality. And this is the thing, isn't it? When you take off the Oculus Rift, you know, headset, you immediately have to reconstruct this reality by moving your head. Where am I? So the, the, there we have the two signs, you know, the extreme behavior and the difficulty of getting back to this reality. And, and then we have the future plans of all sorts of interactivity, you know, on the cloud, more interactivity, you know, thinking we're meeting somebody, you know, in another dimension, great right potential great potential for learning and for therapy for understanding we could put someone a headset on and we could watch their reactions and their, and, and their movements of their eyes we could track the movements of their eyes put headsets on put various images in front of them and then track the movements of their eyes see what, which objects they choose their choice the direction of their att attention and this repetition would show, you know, that mean their various psychological states. So there's great potential, great potential for, for therapy and for analysis, you know, for understanding, but it also a great potential for disturbance. You know, we can see that, uh, say, a, a young girl, a young woman, in a single flat or single room, might put on her Oculus headset and think she's in some sort of Barbie doll castle with all the gear, all the, the rooms, all the dresses, all the dresses to put on. But at 12 o'clock, she becomes time to take the headset off and get back to reality now this is where the problem might arise or what I actually think will arise is that getting back to reality that wanting to return back into the game into that alternate reality when you put the headset on the escape into that psychosis Obviously the Christians might think, oh we can punish people, we can put the headset on and put them through hellfire. We can calm other people down by putting them into the, a different reality, a different space. You know, a temple with monks chanting. Whatever the culture of the individual, put them in that space. You know, then the Oculus Rift becomes very cheap, very cheap way of management you know, of the difficult cases. But then we have this problem of further alienation and further isolation. You know, if we have a whole generation coming up next year 
with the launch of um, I don't know what it is, you know, CV1. I'm all going to escape this reality. Put their headset on and walk about their castle. So that might sound like the Matrix, doesn't it? That we're in another reality and this, this is our Oculus Rift psychosis. You know, how will society cope? You know, cope with people returning or not wishing to return to this reality. And then you cannot return. You find it too difficult. to have established relationships here. So, see, they're trapped in the psychosis. And this cannot be relieved by medications, which I consider to be, you know, the work of the devil. You know, the, you know, an evil addictions to destroy people's imaginations we need a stronger sense of community we need established teamwork rather than in individual isolation to stop a plague an epidemic of oculus rift psychosis